Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where today we're bringing you 10 footballers that were rich before football. Let's get into it. 10. Kaka We start off this list with Ballon d'Or winner Kaka. The typical Brazilian football story is one of rags to riches, and just a simple glance at some of the top players from that nation today does nothing to suggest otherwise. Kaka, however, didn't experience this well-trodden path, as his family were always financially secure. Now, whilst it might not be entirely fair to describe Kaka's family as rich, his situation certainly allowed him to pursue football alongside maintaining a good education. The son of a civil engineer and a school teacher, his family moved from central Brazil to the sprawling metropolis of Sao Paulo when he was just seven years old, which allowed him to be scouted by one of the biggest clubs in the country. Kaka made his debut for Sao Paulo in 2001 and then spent over a decade in Europe, where he made over 400 appearances and found the back of the net almost 150 times. Z1 Serie A, La Liga and the Champions League, representing AC Milan and Real Madrid. Add to that 92 caps for Brazil, the World Cup and of course being named the best player in the world in 2007, and he certainly had a hell of a career. 9. Patrick Bamford The only Englishman on this list, Patrick Bamford has certainly had a comfortable upbringing, which has extended into his professional career. He's a distant relative of Joseph Cyril Bamford, who founded the JCB company back in 1945, as well as obviously Joseph's son, Lord Anthony Bamford. Lord Bamford has a reported net worth of $5 billion and is close with the likes of Tony Blair and Prince Charles. Closer to home though and young Patrick, who joined Nottingham Forest Academy as an 8-year-old, was educated at Nottingham High School, a private establishment with eye-watering fees of over £15,000 a year. It paid off though as Bamford picked up 5 A-stars at GCSE and was offered a soccer scholarship at Harvard University in the USA, widely regarded as one of the best in the world. This became his backup option though as he pursued the sport in England. Clearly a smart lad, Leeds number 9 can also speak French, German and Spanish, as well as play the guitar, piano, saxophone and even achieved grade 7 violin, the highest possible. This season though he is pulling the strings at Ellen Road as Leeds looks set to return to the Premier League for the first time in 16 years. 8. Mario Balotelli The case of Mario Balotelli is a strange one. Born as Mario Barua in Palermo, the son of Ghanaian immigrants, the first few years of his life were as typical as you'd imagine for an African family in Italy. With his father Thomas struggling for work, the family moved up north to Brescia, where social services said that he should be fostered as his parents were struggling with his healthcare. So, at the age of three, little Mario was adopted by Francesco and Silvia Balotelli, who lived in an affluent comune named Concesio, barely a half-hour drive away from where his biological parents live today. Only one other person of note has ever grown up in this small town, Pope Paul VI. But despite his biological parents attempting to bring him home, his foster parents' ability to afford lawyers meant Mario continued to grow up in comfortable surroundings and rarely experienced racism. And such was their influence on his upbringing, despite never officially adopting him, that foster mother Sylvia was brought to tears upon learning that he would be returning home to play for Brescia something Mario also referred to as his father's dream. If you're enjoying this video and want to see more of the same content, don't forget you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date. 7. Marcelo Bielsa It might not be so much a surprise that one of football's greatest philosophers had an educated upbringing, but the reality is that Marcelo Bielsa could have reached the top in any profession he wanted. He grew up in a family of politicians and lawyers, with his father having been an integral part of the full democratisation of Argentina. As Bielsa was turning out for his hometown club Newell's Old Boys and then embarking on a managerial journey, his brother Rafael was undertaking a political career. And as Marcelo was coaching Argentina to Olympic gold, Rafael was the government's foreign minister, and currently acts as the ambassador to Chile. Meanwhile, his younger sister Maria is also a successful politician, and after six years as the vice governor of Santa Fe, is now the housing minister. During all of this, Marcelo has had a career that has seen him manage in his homeland, Mexico, Spain, Chile, France, and now England, and has gained a reputation as one of the most innovative coaches of his generation. The likes of Pep Guardiola, Mauricio Pochettino and Diego Simeone all hail Bielsa as a key influence. And to think, he could have been a politician. 6. Gerard Piquet Barcelona and Catalonia icon Gerard Piquet is no stranger to fame and fortune, being married to one of the world's biggest pop stars and owning a company that pours billions of dollars into events. And whilst his leap to this level of stardom has only developed in the last decade, he's never truly had to worry about money, even from a very young age. Juan, his father, was a lawyer and affluent local businessman, 
whilst his mother is the director of a reputable neurorehabilitation and spinal injury hospital on the outskirts of Barcelona. And that's not where the high profilings end in Piquet's family. His maternal grandfather, Amador Bernabeu, despite his unfortunate name, was a former vice president of Barcelona Football Club. PK has since gone on to make well over 500 appearances for his hometown side, helping lead the Blaugrana to eight La Ligas, six Copas del Rey and three Champions League crowns. Add to that triumph in the 2010 World Cup and the 2012 Euros, and it's probably fair to say that Gerard PK has had everything he could ever want in life. 5. Hugo Lloris In a very similar vein to Gerard Pique, Hugo Lloris grew up in comfortable surroundings, with his parents holding well-paid jobs. The Frenchman's mother Marie is an attorney, whilst his father Luke was a banker dealing with the riches that Monte Carlo had to offer. And it's clear his parents had high hopes for their son from the start, naming him after literary great Victor Hugo, author of both Les Miserables and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Being in a wealthy family allowed young Hugo to take up daily tennis lessons, and he certainly excelled, being nationally ranked and considered one of France's bright hopes in the sport. However, at the age of 13, he hung up his racket in order to focus more on his development in Nice's academy, but credits his footwork to moving along the baseline endlessly in his formative years. And it's only because one day during a break from tennis practice, he found he had a love for football, immediately being attracted to the goalkeeper's position. Nowadays, Lloris holds down the number one spot for Spurs and is a World Cup winner, a long way from the tennis prodigy named after one of the greatest Frenchmen to ever live. 4. Andrea Perlo Strictly speaking, Andrea Perlo wasn't born into wealth. Entering the world in 1979, it wasn't until the early 80s, when his father's new business started to take off, that Andrea started to have a better life. In 1981, Luigi Perlo founded ELG Steel in his hometown of Brescia, and over the following decade saw the small business become a multinational corporation. In 2019, the raw materials company had sales totaling 1.8 billion euros. Unfortunately for the bearded maestro, he continues to own a small stake in the business. And the business bug definitely bit Perlo, as he now owns a vineyard in northern Italy that pumps out some 50,000 bottles of wine each and every year. Amidst all this, Perlo of course turned out for Italy's big three, Inter, Milan and Juventus, and bagged over 100 caps for Italy as well as lifting the World Cup trophy. The fact of the matter is that he probably didn't need to go to all the effort to become one of the greatest midfielders in living memory, but we're glad he did. 3. Mido to followers of his social media, it may come as no surprise that Mido is enjoying life as a high roller. Perhaps the biggest Egyptian football export until Mo Salah, he made his name in Belgium with Ghent before bursting onto the scene with Ajax in the early noughties, starring up front alongside a certain Zlatan Ibrahimovic. As the son of Hossan Wasfi, a successful domestic footballer in his own right, it appeared that Mido had everything he needed to succeed. Soon after, he earned a dream move to Roma, the former club of his footballing idol, Gabriel Battistuta. However, Mido retired from the game when he was just 30, after unsuccessful spells with the likes of Wigan, West Ham and Barnsley, a far cry from what was expected of the young pharaoh back at the turn of the century. He may have exceeded his father's levels by carving out something of a career abroad, but he almost could have been better off in Cairo, helping his then-retired father run a hugely successful national travel company. That way, he wouldn't have to worry about the notoriety that came with being an underwhelming footballer that was destined for so much more. 2. Fike Balkia in at number two, we have possibly the richest footballer in the world. So why hasn't Fike Balkia topped this list? Well, because he is yet to make a professional appearance. Born in Los Angeles, Fike is actually the nephew of the Sultan of Brunei, who is worth a reported $20 billion and at one point was the richest man in the world. Fike's father and the Sultan's younger brother, Jeffrey Balkia, is considered to be one of the world's most notorious playboys, but Fike certainly hasn't followed him down that path. Just 21 years old, he's currently a part of the Leicester City setup, although since signing in 2016, he's yet to make the step up to the first team. Fike has been in the English academy system since 2009, when he signed for Southampton, and has also represented the youth teams of Arsenal and Chelsea. Unsurprisingly, he also quickly rose through the national team ranks, playing for Brunei's under-19s as a 15-year-old and their under-23s when he was just 17. Faik already captains the full national team at his tender age, and hopes he can soon make a mark in the English game too. 1. Gianluca Vialli And it's Gianluca Vialli that beats out Faik to the number one spot. Known for his goal scoring and spells with Sampdoria, Juventus and Chelsea during the 80s and 90s, Vialli is the 10th highest scoring Italian of all time with 275 goals. He even had a brief stint as manager of the Blues, winning the League Cup, FA Cup and Cup Winners Cup in little over two years. But it all began back in Lombardy. Vialli was the son of a man who was a self-made millionaire, who instilled in his five children a work ethic that certainly bore fruit for little Gianluca. Away from the football field, where he was quickly making a name for himself playing two or three years above his age, his home was the Castello di Belzioioso, 
This 14th century castle boasted a massive 60 rooms, a number higher than caps he earned for Italy, and Viali often still spends his holidays at his childhood home near Cremona. His upbringing, combined with the level of success he experienced on the pitch, including two Serie A's, four Coppas Italia, the UEFA Cup and the Champions League while still in Italy, meant he was the ultimate rich kid footballer. And that's it for this week's 10. If you can think of any more footballers that were rich before they actually became footballers, stick them down in the comments below. And as ever, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Football Daily. See ya.